Nate Silver, um, until this election cycle, had been known as a fairly excellent prognosticator. One of the guys who would say that is me. Uh, and I defended him throughout the 2012 election. Uh, idiots like Joe Scarborough would go on the air and go, oh, Nate Silver's polling is incorrect. My gut says the American people will pick Mitt Romney. <laughs> Your gut isn't worth squat. It isn't worth the squat in it. <laughs> Nate Silver had numbers. Unfortunately, in this election cycle, Nate's lost track of the numbers and he can't see past his own bias. I was dancing around it before. No, it's over. It's over. Like I and I, I I'm pulling for Nate. I, I, I want a numbers guy. I don't I'm not interested in your political opinion in this context. I want you to analyze the numbers in, in, in the most objective way that you can. And now, why am I telling you this today? Well, he just came out and said Hillary Clinton now has an 80% chance of winning the election. Now, why would I be upset by that? Uh, I, Bernie Sanders is, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, not going to be the nominee. That fight is over. Uh, and it's Trump versus Clinton. I mean, there are other candidates, etc. But in that fight, I clearly would prefer Clinton to Trump. I can't stand Trump. So I should be ecstatic about that news. I am happy about that news, but I don't believe it. So now here's why I don't believe it. I remember Nate telling me just a little while ago, <laughs> the polls, when Hillary Clinton was losing to Donald Trump, ignore the polls, don't be ridiculous. Who looks at polling this early? Nate, we're still pretty early and now you're at 80%. You were at 0% just a little while ago, now you're at 80%. Wow, okay. He said, we're kind of half at halftime of the election right now and she's taking a 7 point, maybe 10 point lead into halftime. There's a lot of football left to be played. She's ahead in almost every poll, every swing state, and every national poll. Again, you just take a snapshot of time. That is true. But this is the same guy uh, it, that on last month in May, to be fair, this is now June 30th, that was May 10th, so at least a, a, a month and a half, right? And things change, I understand that. But back then, just a short time ago, he wrote about the polls showing Donald Trump leading Hillary Clinton, quote, for fuck's sake, America, you're going to make me go on a rant about general election polls in May? So in May, the polls meant nothing. But in June, the polls mean everything. So again, back then, he sends out these tweets. He says, uh, the election will go through twists and turns, and the polls are noisy. Don't sweat individual polls or short-term fluctuations. One month. Uh, the polls are noisy, the next month they're apparently completely quiet. We got to figure it out. Wait, the elections in November, that's what you were telling me in May. Like, oh my God, the elections in November, what are you stupid looking at polls? And in June, ah, the elections are around the corner, it's in November. <laughs> so all of a sudden the polls are not noisy. One more tweet from back in May. He said, it's usually uh, not worth it uh, to diagnose why an individual poll derivates from the consensus Think macro, not micro, look for robust trends. See, when his candidate, Hillary Clinton, and Nate, let's come on, who are you kidding, man? You backed Hillary Clinton so hard and you twisted every poll uh, during the primary coverage to make sure that it looked like she was leading and it was definitely, definitely going to win. I mean, you should, I mean, you're really going to vote because she's definitely going to win. I know you don't think that. I know you think, oh, that's crazy. I'm just looking at the numbers, that's crazy. But here it is. In May, your candidate Hillary Clinton is losing. The polls don't mean anything, they're just noisy. It's, it's, it's in November, it's ridiculous. Fluctuations. Uh, no, 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 you're thinking micro. You need to think macro. In, in the next month in June, oh, this election is 80% over. She has an 80% chance of winning. Everybody go home. What are you getting all excited about? And conveniently, look, it's not a cabal. They didn't get together with the rest of the mainstream media. But they all think alike. It's groupthink. That's what I'm trying to, I know you don't think I'm trying to help you, but I am. I'm trying to help you to break out of that group thing. You're in New York or DC, wherever you are, and you're in that bubble. You're right in the middle of the bubble. Okay, Hillary Clinton's gonna win. She's gonna win. She's gonna win. She's gonna win. She has to win. She has to win. It can't be Sanders. It can't be Trump. It's gotta be Hillary Clinton. She's winning. She's winning. Everybody go home. That's what they did in the primaries. Then now that's what they're doing in the general election. Remember, I'm against Trump. I want Trump to lose. I hope you're right. But I want you to be fair and honest. I want you to be objective. Because lulling everyone into a false sense of complacency doesn't help. So when you when Trump is up, to dismiss it like ah, it's not important, it's not a good idea. And when Hillary Clinton goes up, to say oh, it's already over, not a good idea. But I'm not saying that out of politics. I'm telling you right now that you want to know my opinion? 
I said it back in May, and I'm consistent in June. The polls do matter. They show you a snapshot in time. Of course we know it's a snapshot in time. But the fact that Trump was tied and in fact had pulled a little ahead of Hillary Clinton in those polling in May, that was amazing. This buffoon should be, I mean, at least 10 points, maybe 20 points behind Hillary Clinton. But even today there's a poll out, Quinnipiac, where she's only leading by two. And she, among white males, now look, she wins it with women, at, although in the last Quinnipiac poll, only by three points that, with white women. And that was devastatingly low margin. But among men, she's getting killed. White men, 56 to 25, Donald Trump is winning. He's got a 31 point lead. You think it's over? You think there's only an, that Hillary Clinton has an 80% chance of winning? That isn't remotely true. You have to be balanced in both cases. The polls don't mean everything and they don't mean nothing. If Trump's lead in May didn't mean nothing, it meant something. And right now Hillary Clinton's lead doesn't mean everything, it means something. You've got to be honest about it. So all right, one last thing from Silver. Now remember Silver gave Trump a 2% chance of getting the nomination. Uh, that's what we in the business call oops. Later he apologized for that, saying, oh well I got that one wrong. But I read the apology, 80% of that was like an Akon song, right? Blame me, but actually I blame you. <laughs> if you ever listen to that song, it's all about blaming you instead. Anyways, so in that apology, I was like, I mean, I was generally right, of course I'm right. And part of Nate's bias here is not, you know, uh, certainly not liberal or conservative. Uh, if anything, it's that groupthink bias. And part of it is that he wrote a book about how the parties matter, the parties decide everything. And he was right up until this revolutionary movement now, where people are sick of it. They don't want to listen to the establishment all over the world, world, whether it's the UK or it's in the US, whether it's on the left, Bernie Sanders, it's on the right, Donald Trump. And he's like, nope, I wrote a book about it. And so the, and the parties pick it. Well, parties pick Jeb Bush and Mark Rubio. Where are they? You might want to go uh, visit them on the golf course because they're in goddamn retirement. You were wrong about that. The parties don't pick anymore. But he's like, nope, 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 nope. It's got to be Hillary. It's got to be she was picked by the party. Anyway, so he gave her, uh, Trump a 2% chance of nomination, was spectacularly wrong. Here they say, but Silver pointed out that Trump's general election numbers have still remained consistent, where his primary voting numbers have not. Now, he says, Oh, in the primary, it was hard to predict because he's going up and down. Actually, he was fairly consistently number one. That's why back in June of 2015, I said he was definitely going to be in the top three. And then by October of 2015, before months before any of the voting, I bet that he would win the nomination. Now, I, what, what did I base that on? My gut? No, I'm not an idiot like a TV pundit. I, funny enough, I based it on the polls. I also based it on how he was campaigning and the mood of the country and how the right wing voters were receiving him. No, 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 2% chance. Okay, so somebody was right and somebody was wrong. But I, but part of that is not, it's not about that. It's about, wait, you said that his polls were all over the place during the primary. Not really, he stayed at number one generally. Now you say in the general election though, totally consistent numbers. Really? Let me show you the polling. Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. That's real clear politics average of polls. Does that look consistent to you? Now forget the left side of that. That's in the primaries that they're not head to head, etc. But let look starting around April, right? What the hell is consistent about those numbers? Hillary Clinton's got a big lead. Donald Trump dips, then he rises, and then he rises more, and then he passes her, and then he dips again. What part of that is consistent enough for Nate Silver to say that? No, that's it. Well, let's wrap this election up. Hillary Clinton has an 80% chance to win. Wrong again, Nate. So I hope that I help in an effort uh, to be objective as we can. And I know that they will never accept that. They'll say, oh, no, you're a progressive, so you support certain candidates and you're biased in favor of that. No, there's two different things. What do you believe politically? And I'm very clear about that. And what do you think is going to actually happen? That is entirely different. That analysis is one that we hope we do certainly honestly and hopefully truthfully. Hopefully we arrive at the truth, but we try real hard. And we'd like everybody else to do the likewise instead of just going with their bias. I'm especially mad because I expect better from Nate. He's supposed to be the guy that we could turn to for facts. Let's get back to that.